All right, guys, happy weekend to you. Um, tonight we are going to be wrapping up the unit on Vietnam with a lesson titled The End of Vietnam and Its Legacy. So our learning targets for today, I can describe the controversy that came along with the ending of the war, and I can explain the positive and negative legacies that the Vietnam War left on America. So, we have a new president in office, 1968 election, President Nixon wins the election. He wins the election because of something known as reverse coattails. Now, what a reverse coattail is, is when you win because of the opponent's downfalls. So we talked about how messed up the uh, Democratic National Convention was on Friday. Nixon will win because he is the Republican, and basically after what happened at the DNC, there's no way that the Democrats would be able to win the election. Also, because LBJ was a Democrat, we want to go in a different direction. So, Nixon's plan, eventually, is to get out of Vietnam. And he wants to do so with a policy known as Peace with Honor. Okay, and in peace with honor, it's basically just about getting out and trying to save face. And his official policy of troop withdrawal from Vietnam is something known as Vietnamization. Okay, so Vietnamization is just withdrawing troops from Vietnam. And that's the policy that he's going to use. Whoops. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that Nixon and his policy of Vietnamization takes a turn for the worst. And that's because of something known as the Cambodian invasion. Now, even though Nixon pledges to get out and withdraw troops from Vietnam, that ends up not being the case. And you guys can see that Cambodia which is right here, okay, has been seen as kind of a refuge for, for Vietnamese troops. So, what Nixon is going to do is he's going to invade Cambodia with U.S. troops. And this happens in 1970. Oops, that's not good. Okay, so this happens in 1970. Now, the reason why this is so bad okay, is because Nixon planned to pull, he pledged to pull us out. But a lot of people look at this invasion of Cambodia as the next step in. So the reaction is, is that people are going to be super upset. People are going to be pissed off with what is going on. And in, we're going to be upset in college campuses. So college campuses are going to stage massive protests. One um, president of a university was quoted as saying that May of 1970 was the most dangerous week or the most dangerous month in the history of higher education. And that is no better evident than at Kent State and the Kent State shootings that take place. So Kent State, which is obviously in Ohio, there was a protest with their students. And because of these protests, the Ohio National Guard was sent in. Now, it's pretty shaky with what actually happened, but the bottom line is, is that the Ohio National Guard will end up shooting protesters, leaving four students dead. And absolutely shaking the world. This right here, this is the most famous picture from the Kent State shootings. It is one of the most famous 
um, U.S. history pictures of all time. That also happened because of the Cambodian invasion. Another fallout from the Cambodian invasion is the repeal of the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. Okay, so basically Congress takes back the Tonkin Gulf Resolution, which says that the president can send troops in um, into other countries if, they, if he deems it necessary. And this is basically a way of forcing U.S. troop removal from Vietnam. So, by 1971, over 60% of Americans want to get out. Now, because 1972 is an election year, what is Nixon going to do? Nixon is going to um, really, really ramp up troop removal from Vietnam. Why does he want to do that? Or why is he going to do that? Because he wants to get elected. Because it is an election year and he's going to do more of what the people want. Now, he's going to make one last push after re-election. So he gains re-election in November of 1972. In December of 1972, he is going to send troops in. And also, more importantly, send bombs in by planes into North Vietnam. And this is something known as the Christmas bombings. And this is going to kind of be his last push. The results of the Christmas bombings is that they don't really do anything. Again, it's just another stalemate. People are more upset than ever. So finally... In 1973, 10 years after the first troops are sent into Vietnam, the Vietnam War will end. Okay, at the very beginning of 1973. Now, the legacy of Vietnam. Let's start overseas. So the future of Vietnam is two years after U.S. leaves. Vietnam will fall to communism, to which it is still to this day. So the North will go in, and they will overtake the South, and it will become communist. Now, the world's view, the world will begin to look down on America. And it will be tough for people to trust America as far as allies go. So it will be tougher for America to gain allies and have them join in this kind of push against communism. Okay. Now, the legacy of Vietnam in America. Okay, let's start with the positives. First positive is the voting age will be lowered. And we discussed this... Whoa, what the hell? Okay, the voting age will be lowered. That is a good thing. Also, something known as the War Powers Act will be created. And what the War Powers Act says is that if the president sends troops in, then he has to give Congress 48 hours notice And he can only have troops over there for 90 days without congressional approval. So we are regaining this idea of checks and balances um, that the Tonkin Gulf Resolution took away. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of negatives. The biggest negative is mistrust of government. Um, one of the things that will emerge is something known as the Pentagon Papers. And the Pentagon Papers are basically going to prove to people that the government's idea all along was to send troops into Vietnam. So even when LBJ was saying, I don't really want to send troops in, 
these papers will show that they wanted to send troops in and they were gung-ho on staying in Vietnam until communism was taken down. Another negative. Vietnam troops were, were treated very, very poorly. They did not receive the hero's welcome that other, um, that other war veterans have received. Now, to go along with this, one thing that is kind of positive is that we will really start to study and see the emergence of something known as post-traumatic stress disorder, which goes along um, with um, being in war. And that will start to come about because of all the nightmares and suicide rates that happen with Vietnam veterans. Um, and that's it. So, you guys can see, 10 years after controversy, the war is finally over. So... If we can describe how the Vietnam War finally ended, how it ended, just like the rest of the war, super controversial, bombing of Cambodia, Christmas bombings, all that stuff, it was nasty, and can we explain the legacy of Vietnam, the positives and negatives that go along with Vietnam, then we are good to go. Other than that, that's all I've got for you guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you on Monday.